characters, mostly told by orchestra players. And uh, one of my favorite is the one about Toscanini, who was a very great conductor, who had the ability to galvanize people to great passion and intensity and expression, and he also had a tempo, famous tempo. Apparently, when he did one of these temper tantrums, he took his watch and smashed it on the floor. I heard recently he bought them wholesale. <laughs> anyway, the story goes that in the middle of the rehearsal, he saw that one of the players in the double bass section wasn't playing very well, and he shouted at him, you're fired! This was in the days before the union. We can't do that now. But in those days, you could fire a musician without any explanation or recourse. That would be the end of his career. So this poor man had to go home, tell his wife he didn't have a job. As he left the room for the last time, he turned around and shouted at Toscanini, you're a no good son of a bitch. And Toscanini shouted back, it's too late to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's the old style of leadership. It's top-down, hierarchical, right-thinking, and male. And it served humanity for about 75,000 years. Now, I used to be that kind of a leader. And not quite as extreme, but uh, I was successful as a conductor. But I paid a high price in terms of the energy, well-being, and self-expression of the people around me. And then I had a quite extraordinary event that came, ha happened in my life. It was almost like a road to Damascus event for me. I was 45 years old, and I'd been conducting for 20 years or more. And suddenly I had a realization for the first time that the conductor of an orchestra doesn't make a sound. Now, my picture appears on the front of the CD. But the conductor doesn't actually make a sound. He depends for his power on his ability to make other people powerful. And when that occurred to me, it was so profound, had such an effect, that people in my orchestra said, Ben, what happened to you? And that's what happened. I realized that my job was to awaken possibility in other people. Now, it became from there uh, a real question whether I was doing that. And the way you find out whether you're doing that is to look at their eyes. If their eyes are shining, you know you're doing it. And if the eyes are not shining, you get to ask a question. And this is the question. Who am I being that my player's eyes are not shining? We can do that with our children. Who am I being that my children's eyes are not shining? Now, from this moment and from this discovery, Roz and I started exploring together a new kind of leadership. Now, we distinguished two worlds, two worlds. One world we called the downward spiral. The world of the downward spiral, in which Toscanini was conducting his orchestra, the world of the downward spiral is the world of competition. Competition in which you might be energized, but you might also be demoralized. The world of fear and pressure, in which you might be uh, galvanized to great things, and at the same time, you might be paralyzed, so the lines come down and they also go up. It is the world in which we live normal life. Most conversations take place in the downward spiral. Gossip and all the magazines that depend on it take place at the downward spiral. TV shows that we're used to. The Apprentice, a perfect example of the downward spiral. How to be a survivor. We have another program, How to Be a Millionaire. And I learned about another one today called Million Pound Drop. <laughs> <laughs> Those are all downward spiral conversations and games. The stock market is a perfect image for the downward spiral. Sometimes it goes up and sometimes it goes down, and we have to constantly observe to see whether it's up or whether it's down, which gives us much excitement and also much dis-ease. 
as he goes down. That's the world. Sports, of course, full of downward spiral. But in sports, it doesn't matter because we all go out for a beer afterwards. <laughs> but our educational system is based on a downward spiral because there's nowhere to go from an A but down. And so we shouldn't be surprised if our children look anxious. Right now, many of you have young children who are worried about whether they're going to get, get, get into college and uh, accepted or rejected. We have a four-year-old who's worried that he may not get into preschool. <laughs> right. So this is a world of measurement and a world of comparisons. Sometimes it seems as though it's the only world, which is not the case, which is why I asked for another flip chart. This world is called the world of radiating possibility, and it has a completely different shape, going out like this. This is a world of shared commitments, shared involvements, of open-heartedness, of open-mindedness, of uh, contribution, of love, of health, both personal and international and for the world, collaboration, curiosity, and grandchildren. Those of you, when you get to my age, will have this experience of having grandchildren. One of mine, who is six, doesn't walk, she skips. Everywhere she goes like this. Now, you don't see this much on Wall Street. They don't do that on Wall Street. <laughs> Somebody did that on Wall Street, they come along in a white van and take them away. But all my grandchild is saying is, I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy you are here, too. And there's a piece of music which goes with that, which is the Beethoven Seventh Symphony, which some of you know, it goes like this. That's actually a very hard rhythm to keep. That rhythm tends to fall into dum ba dum bum ba dum If you're a little lazy, a little quiet, bum ba dum bum ba dum bum ba dum bum ba dum which is a march. You can do that for hours. This rhythm is yum ba dum bum ba dum bum That's the rhythm of skipping. When I did the recording of it, which incidentally you can get at Amazon.com. <laughs> The orchestra, which was a wonderful orchestra, the Philharmonia Orchestra, played yum ba dum bum ba dum bum. After a while, they got a bit tired and played bum ba dum bum ba dum bum ba dum. I said, no, no, the rhythm is yum ba dum bum ba dum bum ba dum. Oh yes, bum ba dum 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 bum ba dum. Kept on falling back. My job is to remind the players what the rhythm of transformation is, because transformation lives here, and the rhythm of transformation is lighter and brighter and faster and more buoyant than the rhythm of exhortation and blame. You should, you ought, you must, you need.